Which is yours. Yep. So my name is uh, Peter Sparell, and I work with a cybersecurity company in Sweden, Simovitz Consulting. Uh, and I've done some work on uh, linguistic uh, cracking of uh, passphrases using Marco chains. Originally, this was uh, master's thesis work um, with my boss, Michael Simovitz, as uh, supervisor. But he couldn't be here today, so I will be doing all the talking. So we'll start with some background. We often hear uh, recommendation or requirements uh, saying our passwords should be uh, long and complex. In order to remember very long passwords, uh, it's basically necessary to skip the complex part and just uh, and based on phrases. And constantly increasing requirements on length of passwords um, leads to increased use of these uh, simpler passphrases. And available uh, cracking methods of today are not very efficient when it, uh, there's more than uh, two words included. Uh, and languages are uh, relatively predictable and far from random, which we should uh, utilize. So, if we try to crack only linguistically correct phrases, uh, could we find an effective uh, way to crack long passwords? And should we, how should we generate these uh, phrases? And finally, is it advisable to recommend users to use a passphrase as a password? This work was a, a test of concept, and we have delimited the uh, passphrases to this definition. Uh, it consists of a longer password, uh, which is uh, composed of two or more words, mostly three or more, uh, without white space. Uh, and we only look at lowercase passphrases in this work, uh, with a maximum length of 20 characters. So a Markov chain, or a Markov process is a process where uh, transitions to other states uh, are determined by probability distribution based on only the current state. The sequence of state transitions in the process builds up a Markov chain. But in the Markov chain of order M, the states are redefined a bit to be able to include a kind of a history of M number of states. And one way to do language modeling is to build up uh, phrases from N grams together with Markov chains of order N minus one. And N grams are sequences with N number of um, elements, which could be either characters or words. An engram of order three is often called a trigram of order four, a four gram, and so on. And this statistic, <coughs> statistic <coughs> excuse me, the statistic, st <laughs> that's what, that was hard. The statistics for the probability distribution of the engrams are generated from counting number of occurrences in, of engrams in uh, larger texts. And from there, it can be later be examined which character, which character is uh, more likely to be to follow a certain s sequence of other characters. So a little bit about our implementation of the marker process. Our, implement our implementation consists of an application generating as um, linguistically correct uh, phrases as possible. And either saved onto a file, which can then be used uh, as a word list in a, any cracking application, or send the phrases directly to a cracking uh, application with, uh, which uh, supports input streams from standard in. If the files are saved, you can reuse the list for future cracking as long as there is space on your hard drive. Kind of a time memory trade-off. So the actual phrase generation is split into two phases uh, with one console application for each. First application will take 
a large text source as a large text file as input, extract n-grams and generate uh, n-gram statistics. The result of that is saved into a new text file where a number of occurrences uh, are shown of each n-gram. The application in the next phase will use the, uh, these n-gram statistics and by going through a marker process it will generate the phrases that will be our output. In phase one, the application is started from the console and the user specifies uh, the text file that should be analyzed as well as the desired order and level of the engrams. The level could be word level or chart level. The source file is read and uh, processed line by line, uh, reading out and counting the engrams. Some filtering and changes are made. For example, all the punctua punctuation marks are replaced by a single dot to represent uh, sentence breaks. Including the sentence breaks makes it possible to select the start of the generate, generated phrases by taking into account which engrams are more common in the start of sentences. And we can also do the same in the end of the phrases to end them in a more sensible way. So in character mode, we also still keep track of white space, which is uh, used in the process as uh, word breaks, even if the final output is stripped of white space. So when the file is read to the end, our ngram statistics are saved to a text file, which will be used in the next phase. And starting the actual phrase generation in phase two, you can set both a lower and upper limit on the length of the, of the generated phrases you want. And you can also choose if, uh, <coughs> if you want to have a certain number of words in your phrases. And of course, you choose the ngram file to use. The program reads the ngram statistics file and sort the ngrams in a list of states of size n minus 1 where every state has sublists of the possible next character or word, uh, depending on mode, sorted by the number of occurrences in the source text. The example shows a small extract from a list of um, foreground statistics where the states on the left consist of three characters and their sublists to the right are sorted according to the number of occurrences in the source text. So the starting states, which begin with a dot, are loaded into a separate list, to, which, <clears throat> which is also sorted according to the number of occurrences. And you can also choose to set a threshold value. Uh, the engrams that don't have a higher occurrence than this value will be ignored. Uh, so there will be no generated phrases containing those engrams. For each starting state, phrases are then built up one at a time using a recursive function that goes through all possibilities in order according to these engram statistics. So now I will try to describe what our goal is and which values we need to calculate to determine if we have achieved that goal. goal. So there are different estimates of the complexity or entropy of uh, the English language. Some estimates are based on human guesses where you already know about earlier letters, uh, so you have a perfect model of the language. Uh, NIST has adopted their uh, interpretation of entropy slightly towards the passwords context. So we will be using their interpretation of entropy as our target. They assign uh, different values to different characters in the text, uh, where the first is assigned four bits of entropy, and uh, for each subsequent character, the uh, assigned entropy is lowered gradually. As an example, uh, for a 16 character phrase, you get an entropy of 30 bits, a password uh, of 16 totally random 
checked as having entropy of 75 bits, which means it should be 40 trillion times easier to guess a correct English phrase of this length than a randomly chosen. So for the evaluation, we will compare our values against those we get from the NIST's way of cal calculating entropy. And we call this the target entropy. Then for each phrase list we generate, we calculate uh, how large entropy this phrase list potentially could have, only based on how many phrases it contains. Uh, we call this the potential history. If the phrase list has a lower potential entropy than the target entropy, it means it probably contains uh, too few phrases and there's, there are more phrases in the English language than in our phrase list. If it's higher than the target entropy, uh, the number of generated phrases in, is enough to cover, it, uh, cover the language, but it doesn't mean they are linguistically correct. So to make an estimate of how correct the phrases in the list are, we calculate the efficiency, <coughs> the efficiency after a, su a successful uh, cracking attempt by dividing the uh, uh, number of cracked hashes by the number of sort hashes. With this efficiency and the total number of phrases in the list, we then calculate an estimated entropy of the phrase file. So for example, if half of the target passwords were cracked, the estimated entropy becomes one step higher than if all were cracked. So finally, some results, or, or some testing variables. Uh, testing samples were created from um, uh, by some of my colleagues at uh, Simovitz Consulting. Uh, I asked them for hashes of uh, 10 passphrases from each one and I got in, <coughs> I received uh, 66 hashes. They hashed the uh, passwords themselves so I had no idea what the passphrases were. Only thing I know was uh, how many of each length there was. The engram statistics were uh, created from uh, three different sources. Uh, to get some variety on the underlying language and see the effect of that. The one source most used uh, was the one from the news source since it was, was the largest with three million sentences. And the variables used to generate the phrase list can be derived from the file names chosen in the results later. Uh, so if you see a file named like this, it means, uh, well, the L20 means that the length of the phrases are 20, cherry it as long. Uh, W6 means there are always six words in these phrases. T5 means the threshold is set to five. N3 means n gram of uh, order three was used, trigrams. Um, W means that the engrams were at word level, and news means that the source text was the one from the news sites. So here are the results from a few different uh, attempts. If we start by looking at the phrases with length 10 at the top here, uh, it may be interesting to note the difference in number of generated phrases. Um, between the charity level and word level. The first file cracked seven out of 15 hashes, which is a pretty good result. But because the potential entropy um, there uh, was so large compared to the target entropy, which is that one, uh, the estimated entropy also got, uh, became high. Also is interesting is that uh, despite the change in, um, of the threshold value at word level, line two and three here, um, and almost six times as many phrases in the file with no threshold, they both craft the same number of uh, hashes. And that makes the 
estimated entropy larger for the file containing more phrases, meaning that it was less effective. So at length uh, 14, um, phrases based on the five gram character level uh, was not able to crack any hashes. But when eight grams were used instead, uh, two hashes were cracked. The word level files cracked two other hashes, which between them was, were the same. So the two total unique of, uh, total of unique hashes uh, cracked at uh, phrase 14 was four. So at length 16, uh, the criteria on the test um, on the test samples were that the phrases should consist of four to six words. So the files were restricted to that. Um, and that unfortunately means that the target entropy no longer match exactly. Uh, and it's actually slightly lower than 30. Here the files are divided into groups with different number of words per phrase um, in order to limit the file sizes. So it's, it's the lines with the sums that are most interesting here. The group, group rows. So group two was the best attempt in the terms of estimated entropy, even though the six word file ruined the result drastically. Uh, we also compared different text sources at the word level of phrases uh, containing five words, those two. Um, and the hashes that were, were broken in the, these two files were uh, different and or unique, uh, which shows that the choice of source text is uh, clearly influencing. In total, there were six unique passphrases cracked of length, length 16. At the phrase length of 20, <coughs> Phrases started to get extremely long, and none of the first two files were able to crack anything. But when we let the phrase generation work for a while, um, we finally got the results on the 20 character phrases to, uh, as well. Bottom two line shows the, uh, shows the su successful results. Uh, and. Um, that the fr phrase generation took uh, weeks to complete. If you, if you look at that column. The potential entropy is lower than the target entropy, which indicates that despite the longer generation times, there were still too few phrases uh, to cover the English language. So the total number of crack 20 character phrases were two. This chart shows the different entropy values from the table in the previous slides to get a better overview. The goal is to, that the bar for the estimated entropy, the dark blue, uh, to be um, as low as possible, but not lower than the bar of the target entropy, the light blue. Uh, all three bars should be as equal as possible. And uh, keep in mind that this is a two log scale, so one unit corresponds to a doubled increase. You can easily see, see here what I mentioned in the last slide that the most effective attempt was the group two of the phrase length 16 at word level. And because there is no other publicly available effective cracking attack on these length of pass phrases, uh, uh, the phrase lists uh, estimated entropies are here compared to the entropy of brute force attack. Uh, anything is more effective than brute force, of course, but the question is how much. So this is also a, a two logarithmic scale, so one bit decrease means double the efficiency. We can easily see that it, it <coughs> This works a uh, method of cracking, although it can be further developed and optimized, is far more efficient than a brute force attack. And we also did a test against real life passwords on the LinkedIn leaked hash dump. 
this was done using only our previously created list with the same phrase length, lengths. Uh, and with some help from uh, password stats from uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, uh, we estimated the number of lowercase password of each length. length and um, our method seems to generally crack about 10% of this target scope. But in that target scope, uh, several passwords uh, are included that still are not linguistically correct phrases, which was the target of our work. So probably this is a little better. For so, that we succeeded in cracking that many phrases should be seen as a good result. Of the <clears throat> and compared to brute force, it's of course superior in terms of entropy. Uh, the goal to reach the target entropy was not really achieved, but even so it feels like uh, the Marco model is um, a pretty effective language model to crack uh, password phrases, especially in lack of other methods. If you look at what type of n-grams was uh, most effective, it was the three grams on the word level, uh, despite that the word level phrases took slightly longer to generate. Uh, and all things considered, uh, if you use pass phrases, they should at least be longer than 20 characters, and all character sets should be used. This work was just a test of concept, and the method and implementation could be improved a lot. For example, performance optimi optimizations um, of the implementation are possible and desirable, and including other character sets are uh, necessary for use in real situations. Improvement, improvements in the algorithm is, uh, like the phrase generation order, is also possible to make it more effective. So if you want more info, throw me a mail or visit our company website. Uh, there will soon be English content about this work in the news or the blog section. And the code will also be released as open source on SourceForge uh, soon if you want to get a copy or contribute to code. Thank you. <laughs>